Hey, what's up guys, Mike Redfox. In this video, you gotta see why this is better at mining Ethereum than any GPU, period. So you know what, before we cut to the next part in the video, let's take a little bit of a closer look at this Xilinx Varium C1100 FPGA. So an FPGA is a field programmable gate array. More or less, it's a piece of hardware that's built and meant to be programmed for later, which is exactly what's happened and why we're able to mine Ethereum on it. So you can see it's a pretty narrow looking card. You see it's got some different looking ports on it there and then on the top as well. Though it does have a familiar PCIe slot right on the bottom. And then on the back, we have the familiar 8-pin power right there. The other thing you'll notice is that there's no uh, cooler or fans installed like it would be on a GPU. This, in fact, everything you see here is something that I installed to keep this cool, to keep airflow going through this FPGA. And actually, right now, I'm going to install this in the next part of this video. So let's get going. All right, here's a close look at the C1100 FPGA. There it is. It looks beautiful. So the first thing I had to do is get this cooling kit installed that I purchased off a fine gentleman over on the Team Red Miner Discord, because apparently these growing pretty toasty because they're not designed to be in an open air frame or open air mining environment. So I'm going to get this installed. You can see that it has a fan that's going to blow air through the card. And this is a 3D printed bracket that attaches to the back to mount the fan. So let me get that going. Brackets installed, and now I have this little adapter for the 8-pin to make it more accessible now that this bracket is installed. So let me put that in. Now let's put the fan on. Okay, got that installed. Looks really, really good. And what you can see here is the fan still needs to be powered, right? There's the power cable for the fan. Now what you'll notice is it's rated for 1.85 amps, which according to the instructions, I should use an externally powered fan hub or splitter because typical motherboard Fan headers are only rated for one amp. So I could use that if I run this fan at 50% or less, but I'm not sure yet. So let me figure that out. So I found this fan hub that I had lying around and it uses SATA for its power, which should be fine is 4.5 amps is what SATA is rated for. And that fan is only rated for 1.85 amps. So I'm going to use this and then connect it to the system fan four pin on the motherboard. And we'll see what we get. Got the C1100 up on the test bench right here. So just like a GPU, it's on a riser. It's got an 8-pin power in that. Obviously, you guys saw me install this fan already. Uh, I guess the only other weird thing with this FPGA is it communicates with the miner over USB, which comes out of the front of the FPGA and connects to the motherboard there. But other than that, I'm ready to power this thing on. Let's see what happens. All right, looking good. That fan, pretty loud, pretty loud. I can feel it pushing the air through the FPGA. It's coming out the other side. Feels really good, so that should keep that nice and cool. Got lights on the riser, lights on the FPGA. This should be booting into HiveOS. Let's take a look and see what we have to do next. So I didn't have to do anything. HiveOS booted my default flight sheet with Team Redminer launch. It downloaded the bitstreams for me, and it put this FPGA to work. And you can see on your screen right now, this FPGA is doing 73.77 mega hash. And above me, you can see it's pulling 98 watts in line over PCIe. That is 73.77 mega hash for 100 watts. That is insane. That is crazy efficient. One thing I'll call out, if you remember, the fan is externally powered from the power supply, so that's not being counted in to the power that you see above me. But even so, what amazing, amazing performance on this FPGA. I think I could even take it up a little further. So you can see over in the tuning guide from Team Redminer, most cars will run stably at a 1220 memory clock. And I might be able to go further if it's really got a good silicon lottery or running really, really cool up to 1310. So I'm going to mess with this overclock and see what kind of performance I can get out of this FPGA. So here's the maximum performance I was able to get out of this FPGA as it stands right now. 78.13 mega hash per second for 103, 104 watts measured in line over PCIe. Again, not taking into account the fan that I'm running there, but what I was able to do is get the core megahertz up to 640. If I went above that, it started to crash. And to keep a two to one ratio, I was able to get the memory megahertz all the way up to 1280 to give me that 78.13 mega hash per second. This FPGA is absolutely awesome. I'm in love with it. It's the most efficient mining thing that I own. How can I not absolutely love it? But there are a couple of things that I'm thinking about and a couple of things that you should know. 
One, I potentially could get more performance out of it if I put new thermal pads and new thermal paste on it, according to some reports I've seen. So I may tinker with that. But most importantly, two, all it can mine is Ethereum. The way FPGAs work is that they're dependent on developers to release bitstreams and put the hardware to work to mine. That's what the Team Red Miner developers have done. They released a bitstream publicly for us to be able to use this specific hardware to mine Ethereum. When Ethereum stops being able to be mined, what else am I supposed to do with this thing? I'm really at the mercy of developers to release bitstreams for any other algorithm so this doesn't just become an expensive paperweight. So there's a risk associated with any type of FPGA purchasing and mining. So just please consider that before you run out and buy a thousand of these. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more GPU mining content. Jump in my Discord if you want to chat. The link is down in the description. And as always, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.